if you take a look here at this trench system, you'll see it. So it's revetted with uh, with wood. This is actually this was actually taken off the uh, U.S. Army manual dated 1917 of how to build a trench system. Uh, it, was, it was copied from the British manual, but you could see that this is uh, this is very well built. It's very well constructed. You probably would not have seen a trench system this good. In, 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 in Europe, unless it was in the rear area, a very rear area, in a quiet sector. You can imagine that nobody was shelling at you. You could, you could, you could build something like this. But this isn't the case in a normal sector in, in, the, in the front lines. You'd see sandbags, corrugated tin, uh, corrugated iron, and they even experimented with chain link fencing uh, to, keep the, to, to keep the dirt back. Trench warfare, nobody really wanted to get into this. They had seen what had happened in the Sino-Japanese War, but what happens is with the mass mobilizations of armies, the, mass, the two armies clash at the Battle of Frontiers in 1914. They clash, they dig in, and they start trying to outflank each other, each time met with stalemates. So by the end of 1914, early 1915, you have a solid line of trenches from the base of the Swiss Alps in the south to the Belgian coast, where the war sits for about the next four years. Uh, the French army uh, generally holds about 80% of the line. When you really look at the war, the, uh, French, ar the uh, French army has about 80% of the line. And the, it's really, on the Western Front, the war is really between the French and, and the Germans going, going at it. The French lose between 1.2 and 1.3 million men of military age. That would be like us going to war today and losing 11 million men out of, out, out of, you know, out of our population.